Well, hey guys. This is um, my second video looking at the um, Olympian spirits. But before I looked at the um, origin of the Olympian spirits and everything, although I'll, I'll probably mention it all through this anyway, I thought I'd just look at angels. Um, I mean, for me, angels were always the the Christian angels, you know, the the male figures with the big feathered wings and it's only been in my sky watching career that I've sort of become to sort of <laughs> realise that these were just depictions of beings that they were seeing or something that was being seen. And a few weeks ago I um, watched a video by Arwen Steiger called Golden Dawn, um, the planets and their sigils, or sigils as it's sometimes pronounced. Um, I'm beginning to think this music's getting a bit loud, I'll just turn it down. And things really started to come together for me. And I've been sort of putting off researching them. And I just started to get a bit blown away by it all, to be honest, because it seems to me that magic is practiced, has always been practiced, and religions were created just to keep us a lot in line. And they're just merrily carrying on the old ways. Pre-Christianity, it was the, Ma the Magi. They were the magicians, the pagan magicians and it's just continued alchemy and magic and um, I'm starting to think that through ritual they are summoning elemental energies and quite possibly manipulating them and using them against each other in various ways but ultimately, it is God who has the final say. Now, this book that they come from, the Arbitel, I went to it with some sort of like caution because it's um, a grimoire, but not to grimoire as such. Grimoires are um, books of magic, magical spells, and secret code language and. Um, tells you how to summon demons and angels. Now, yeah, angels, demons, the um, orders of angels do include this as well. It's not beyond the realms of possibility that this is exactly what is happening in our skies right now. So I'm here at this page here, which is looking at the orders of angels. So these are sort of the Christian version here. And I'll I'll get to the orders in a in a while, but I just want to show you some of the sort of iconographies. Always these feathers, always shown sort of ascending with God at the top. See, I always sort of just associated angels with God. That God had angels, and that was it. But no, 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 no. They're all of God, but there's a lot more going on. Here are the seven orders here, but I shall go to a better better look than that. This is quite interesting because this is Dante's take on it all. So we've got Earth here, and then the spheres here, and up above the lot. You see, if you look at this in a three-dimensional way, these will be spheres. This could be a flat earth. Here. Up, up, up. And God above with the nine orders circling around God. So this is more of a medieval look. Always with the wings. The wings. Halos. 
wheels, circles, stars, spheres, yeah, do you see? Let's see, list of them again, but everybody likes this sort of thing, don't they? They love this. It's sort of like, you know, Netflix type, dramatic, but I'll show you a picture in a minute, yeah? Of a, wi of a wing like that that I took in the sky. So, yeah. It's a medieval. So the hierarchy and the orders of angels. So this is the sort of thing you see in your Christian and your Catholic iconography. And in the first sphere you have your seraphim, your cherubim and your thrones. So seraphim. Look at this. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? It's a modern depiction. This is what sort of more medieval, how they saw them. They had six wings, two that covered their eyes, two that covered their feet, and two that they flew with. Yeah? Or they fly with. There's many depictions. They've all got this similar sort of look. No, I... There's a seraphim and the cherubim, and people, they do get mixed up. One of them has got four heads. And I've got the cherubim. Now this is the one with the four heads. Yeah, we'll go to him in a minute. Yeah, the seraphim. So I... I was sky watching and this, this three clouds, three or four clouds appeared above me and I, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing and I, I, I took a still from the video let me take it up a bit for you do you see? And they were extremely close. So the seraphim, Isaiah saw the seraphim, they stood over Jehovah as he sat on his throne, they are divine creatures associated with the cherubim and later taken to be angels. They are often referred to as seraph, a fiery flying serpent, they are associated with fire. They dwell in the presence of God. They are tall with six wings and four heads, one for the cardinal directions. Yeah, that is the seraphim. See, they get they get mixed up, the seraphim and the cherubim. They stand in the direct presence of God. They remain close to the throne of God. They circle the throne. So the seraphim are the ones way up top. Cherubim. Name me means fullness of knowledge. God often dispatches them to the physical realm to do specific tasks such as expulsion of man from the Garden of Eden and the Annunciation of Christ. They remain on duty at the entrance. Mm. 
those two golden cherubim on the top of the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> this beautiful imagery here. Thrones, the lesser known group. They're exempt from and untainted by any base and earthly things. Because of their high rank, they are worthy of fellowship with Jesus Christ and possess the highest knowledge that angels can have of the works of God. They are involved with justice in the heavens. And some, and some of the most powerful angels. So in the second sphere, we have your dominions, your virtues and your powers. So some sources refer to the dominions as the hashmalim, the primary function that God delegates to them is the task of relegating, regulating sorry, the duties of lower angels. As the name implies, these angels present order to the lower ranks and will on occasion make themselves known to man. They preside over nations. The dominions are believed to look like divinely beautiful humans with a pair of feathered wings, much like the common representation of angels, but are distinguished from other groups by wielding orbs of light fastened to the heads of their scepters. So all these lights we see in the sky as well, you know, all these what we're calling light sources of light, light sources. This is all this sort of like human look to these things is what we've attributed. They have s these staffs and they have spheres and they have wings. The virtues responsible for the maintenance of the physical universe. So their job is to f supervise the movements of the heavenly bodies. powers and sources this powers as the bearers of conscience and the keepers of history and in the third sphere we have the principalities the archangels and the angels so after all that lot we have the angels and they're the higher lot are the higher angels so the principalities we usually see these entities wearing a crown and carrying a scepter their duty also is to carry out the orders given to them by the dominions and grant blessings to the material world. They oversee groups of people mm -hmm. as beings related to the world of the ideas they inspire living things to many branches of knowledge such as art and or science. Indeed. <laughs> Archangels. We know them from the Bible, but we don't know as much as we think. We associate these chief angels as the great heralds of good news, announcing the great and most glorious. According to Dionysius, the Areopagite, their principal service consists in revealing prophecies, knowledge and understanding of God's will. Good grief. Angels. Messengers that commune with various life forms within the physical worlds. This order includes guardian angels of mankind and as such are the most accessible angels to humans. They are more properly named angels by humans than those of higher rank because their order is more directly in contact. And these are the ones that look like this. Yeah. Okay, right. So, I want you to listen to this little bit of video by William Henry. Now, William Henry, oh, I found an amazing video by William Henry. Somebody actually recommended it to me and it was him that sort of got me on this. It was a good two years ago. You see how I've been dodging this? And it was about um, Akhenaten and light and um, the light from the second sun which is behind our original sun there is a second sun um, m many people say that it's uh, Sirius but at the end there was um, a little add-on video about the red tether and he had all these um, illustrations of Egyptian art and Sumerian art and other art with this red tether and it's supposed to be the red tether that that it, it attaches you and you can ascend and in Kabbalah don't they wear a red um, piece of rope or string around the wrist the Kabbalah 
followers. So I'd like you to listen to this because he talks a lot about angels. This is a good good video to watch. But here, I'll just turn this off now. He describes them a bit. The seraph of these watcher angels. Because we start to learn that they are lightning-like. Lightning, of course, is plasma. And that's what our sun is made of. So when the ancients are telling us that they're light beings, we now understand that they are actually plasma beings. In fact, in the Jewish mystical book, the Hekelat Zutari, we learned that their walking is like the appearance of lightning, a lightning bolt, plasma. A vision of them is like a vision of a rainbow. Their faces are like the vision of a bride, and their wings are like the radiance of the clouds of glory. So these beings are lightning-like, they're rainbow-hued, perhaps, and they're radiant, meaning they're luminous, and they're glorious beings, meaning they glow rays. So we're going to put this cheesy plasma ball on here, and it's going to tip our imagination to recognize that what these ancient artists are trying to convey with these feathers is not necessarily that they're wearing feather cloaks, but their bodies are feather-like because they're luminous, plasma-like beings that can take on physical incarnation that reminds these artists that, that of what we think of as bird feathers. So in my opinion, we're clearly describing energetic beings, plasma beings, lightning-like beings that take on this, this physical human resemblance. The Dead Sea yeah. Scrolls. Yep. Plasma beings. That's William Henry's video, The Lost Spiritual Technology of the Angels. It's a, quite a recent one, 2016. There's some of his stuff on there's quite old, but it's worth listening to. He's probably a, ma a major, he's probably a magician. Lots of people are practicing magic. I, I'm getting it now. I'm getting, I'm getting this. It's a very clever game that they play. Right, we've looked at that, we've looked at that. I want you to look at some of my photographs that I've taken. Yep, all right, I'll go back one. All right, I'm going to bring the screen up as well. Okay, right, I'll start here. This is, I see this a lot. This is seen a lot. Um, I used to think it was the planet Nibiru with the wings and this here with the, with the spear inside but now I'm beginning to think that it's um, a, 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 an angelic flyover, flyby. This is a reptilian that appeared in my sky one night. Can you see this? This is head and here's its glowing eyes, nostril veins when I edit my photographs I that is the first photograph that I took that made me <laughs> sort of think it might all be a little bit more than we are led to believe this was the day before my brother's funeral when I had just started sky watching look at this can you see her Got two pairs of wings here going, maybe more here, and this curving body and this tail and it's sweeping. I mean, what causes something like this? You know? Yeah, when I edit, I just up the contrast a bit and take the light down a bit, and that's it. And that's all I do. This was taken when the red dragon went over. It was so clear in the sky. It was it's like a skeletal dragon wing. This looks like something coming through. Seen this a lot. It's I've often thought they're crafts, but I think it's a star shape. Can you see? I think if this was to continue, it would take a star shape. I'm not saying it's a star. I'm just saying <laughs> I don't know what it is. This is um, a photograph I took out from outside of my bedroom window. This upside down rainbow visited me a lot and I haven't seen it for a while but I'm actually painting a representation of um, one of the visitations I had of it. I This is the edit of it. 
and you can see here it's beyond any sort of like um, explanation really isn't it of this world and I am told by wiki and the BBC news and weather etc that these upside down circumventional arcs whatever they're called are caused by ice crystals in the higher atmosphere and I think that is complete made up nonsense here she is that was outside the window that's outside the door here she is again at a different time this is a goddess on a throne I just she's got her arms outstretched here has her head with her hair flowing back this is her breasts her knees she's sitting on a throne on a cloud goddess here she is again arms outstretched can you see this is how they present this is how they look they come in different they look in di they look different and all this lot around are all the other angels all the other stuff that comes with them and this look at this floating round by itself one day what what can i say it's a bit of an edit it's an angel isn't it this this was from a couple of years ago this is what they're saying is um the the red dragon the planet that's going to come in and destroy us i just think it's uh, a seraphim you know it's a seraphim or it's um, a representation one of the aspects of saturn which is it's not it, the olympic spirit isn't saturn it's something else which i can't remember because i haven't memorized them yet but one of his um aspects is a man riding a red dragon these whimsical things that we see a lot of we sort of like things going that way and that way these are um, mirrors done by my sky watching friend Audrey this is just astonishing this is how they appear when you mirror them Here's my rainbow again. This, you're going to have to use your eyes here. Just coming into focus on the far right is a donkey head. And you'll see it clearer here now. And in the middle, there's next to it, there's like a more of a skeletal type being. And then next to that, there's a sort of goat type thing. But the donkey head is pretty clear. And all of the clouds in this this photograph are very strange. This was from about four years ago. So this has been going on a while. And here it is. This, that's, that's better. There's a donkey head. The one in the middle. And I could, it was clear in the sky to me as well, you know. It's almost like an owl, isn't it, that last, that first one. And this is my rainbow and the dove. This is what? I think I had a visitation from an angel that day. This is a still. Can you see? Now I think these are sort of sigils. I mean, it just, oh, oh gosh. I, I've, to this day, I watch the video which I have here now and it sends shivers down my spine
sorry, it all went a bit funny there. I just want you to look at this bit of it here as well. I'll just play it. Like this spear at the front, this sort of fish hook type thing. And these things here that look almost like sigils, don't they? There it is. But yeah, so I film this. Eleventh of May, two thousand and seventeen, and I've got a playlist called Rainbows and Other Signs, and it's got a few of my sort of more angelicy looking ones on here, and. I don't have to look too much. Here we go. This was the rainbow when she visited. Two thousand and seventeen, this one. I film her for quite a long time, but I'll move it forward because I go upstairs and I catch the most glorious stuff from upstairs. I want you just to have a look at what is going on in the sky. Here I am upstairs now. Now, if you think of this Olympic spirit thing. <laughs> you know? Aspects of, of planets. This to me was heavenly, you know? At the time I was blown away, you know, and it made a very good video as well. Look how things are sort of shooting here from the sun, from the side of the sun, and more rainbows come in. It's rainbow light beings. This is beauty all the way, this. Faces of the gods here, sky god, and this here, little light being, and it's just wonderful. This is has to be angelic, surely. I said so at the time. <laughs> you see how we get led off track. Now, Rebel Without a Pause put up a video today. Um, well, yesterday, I think. I think I missed it going up, and he's looking at. Um, what I think is a light being. It was filmed by Linda Miller and I'll put a link to Rebel's channel as well because um, it's it's worth looking at. It's an angelic being. And um, a couple of things I would like to mention. Uh, Vincent Bridges, who was um, unfortunately died quite recently and he was getting quite popular. Um... He was starting to sort of gather himself a little bit of a cult following and getting onto YouTube and things like that. And anyway, he's no more. But he was a, an expert on John Dee. And um, I was looking through some of his stuff today. I've really got to read it properly. Um, it's not beyond my comprehension. There's not, there's not too much maths in it. We talk about lots of talk about DNA and but maths does come into it because he also talks about the I Ching which is interesting because so does Terence McKenna talk about the I Ching and I now think that Terence McKenna was a plant alchemist and they do exist um, they're all they're all um, in the club they're all in the magic club that's what it's all about and um, he was saying that 
John D actually spoke to the angels of um, the Olympic spirits when he was contacting the angels. So he wasn't sort of like um, communing with God or anything like that. He was talking to some of the angels from the Olympic spirits. And I just think that there's just too many things pointing to this. Anyway, I rest my case on angels being actually there. And um, please comment. I'll leave some links. Anything that I've forgotten in this video, I will name in the next video. I would also like to point you to Truthful Spirit and Blue, Her Blue Heron, who's also putting some really interesting stuff out at the moment about sigil sigils and angelic languages. So, um, yep. Keep looking up, guys. And thanks for watching.